right so welcome everyone so as we have seen in the previous lesson we did created the fluids the gigantic dusty storm and here we would like to discuss about the further detailing section of the fluids in terms of the shading look and feel precisely and we're also going to talk about some principles of the lighting as well so let's get start with that one so i'm at frame 46 and you could see that now the fluids are being looking quite good but obviously they're not going to catch up with the uh, like look and feel in terms of the look and feel like the shading and the lighting of course this is quite a flat kind of the fluids highly contrast so we're not going to accept that and i also notice one more thing that most of the fluids are also being getting driven away in this direction so based upon my camera angle or my bookmark that i've created there is a lot of empty space so you can see the negative space being getting uh, generated over here so we like to fix them up as well well we don't need to do anything else we just need to select the group of the fluids so let's say I'm, I'm gonna select the, the fluid group all right so I'm gonna select the fluid group and I can just push them a little bit in this direction so with that we're not gonna have a lot of the negative spacing over here this kind of things we can also do at the end well, it's not a problem. Okay, so moving forward, we'd like to go inside the shading section. So till now, we have already taken care of the, the density attributes of the fluids where you notice the importance of the noise, the gradient force, which is absolutely important thing. And I'm not going to put any key over here because this is going to be the continuous process. So we don't need to put any key. And the most important and the valuable attribute of for the entire fluid is the noise of the velocity so please take care of this one all right i can't stress this enough because you know this is a very very important attribute to simulate the realistic dusty impact of the fluids uh, along with some details inside the plumes as well also okay so now moving forward towards the shading we do have the transparency so i hi highly encourage you to dip down the values of the transparency we don't need to give it the default which is 0.25 so i can go with 0.6 as with that you could see that there is a you know some softness that is taking care taking place inside the fluids all right so uh if you remember we kept that thing onto the object mode to take care of the exact coordinate axis so moving downwards this is a z positive and moving upward the z negative so I'd like to fix that thing to the Z negative and as you could see that there is a small change happening over here because you know the fluids are being um, getting drifted away towards this direction which is you know uh, technically speaking with respect to the world coordinate geometry the Z positive but with respect to the fluid container which has been rotated 90 degree towards the rotation X uh, this is moving towards the y positive. So what I'm going to do is that over here, I like to dip down the edge drop off. Let's say 0.2 is a good start. Yeah, it's fine because we also need to have some softness over here. Otherwise, the fluids are going to get collapsed with the container and some, you know, bad flattened kind of the fluids will appear, which won't going to give you the feel of the realistic dusty storm. Okay, so this has been done. So now moving towards the color. Of course, you may could do that thing uh, with the help of the composting packages as well, but just for some sake of simplicity as well as some, uh, you know, nice look and feel like to give some properties of the color as well. So I'm going to add another color entry list over here and like to give some, uh, obviously you may could guess that some uh, dusty kind of the look and feel, which is quite a good. I can make it a little bit more dull. Uh, okay, it's fine. And with that, I can give the same color, but with the lesser impact, a little bit more brighter as well. So this would like to give me the look, look and feel of the dust. And of course, we could do one more thing, which is, you know, you can set the color input mode to the Z gradient instead of that. So we may could also expect some, you know, a uh, little bit darker feel at the bottom and a little bit more lighter feel in the upward directions because you may could expect that the sunlight will going to fall upon the upper section of the dusty storm so that 
you know, it will be a little bit more brighter. But this, again, I like to leave it up to you, your artistic decisions. So you can play with the shading as well as, as long as you want. Okay, so I think so. that's uh, quite a good. Now, moving down, we do have the opacity graph as well. Well, in that case, I don't think so. That will, it will be very, very important to have the uh, most accurate, the opacity graph, because this section will going to work that will going to control the transparency of the fluids. This is highly, highly transparent. So we didn't want it that way. So obviously the graph need to be in this way. And we can pull them up. You're going to notice that thing, uh, the importance of this graph when the fluid will going to respect the dissipations of the voxels. Before then, it won't be like that much, you know, uh, impressive. So Overall, the graph should look like that. And you're also going to add some input bias to that so that when they are uh, being getting end, you're going to see some nice uh, crispy results of the dust over here as well. So you'll get that thing with the help of the input bias. So that's quite okay. Now moving towards the lighting section since we have already discussed with you. I mean, I have to switch it on because uh, without this, there's totally the uh, the flat fluids which is which is not like that much good so when we have the self shadow you could see that the fluids are now uh, giving us a look and feel of the shadow as well but since you also know that we are not going to utilize the realistic rate as shadows in this case because they're going to eat up a lot of uh, rendering time as well as so much of the computations will going to get wasted yeah, but if you are interested in going for the rendering like the V-Day or the Arnold, you might could get some good results. But in this case, we are not going to deal with that. So we're going to utilize only the self-shadow attributes of the fluids by switching off the real lights, obviously. And the shadow opacity, let's say it remained to be 0.65 maximum. And if you're going to give it to 1, you'll start noticing the, uh, you could say, the impact of the velocity noise over here since this is a very important thing so let me just gonna give it to 0.65 now we do have the ambient color as well so we could give the ambient color in that way and the ambient brightness with 0.5 so with that the fluid will look more better since there the dust so inside the dust there's a property that the light when they do enter inside it they also go for the multi scatter as well so the ambient brightness also need to be, you know, pushed or you can say need to be stretched a little bit further. So we need to take care of that attribute as well. For the directional light, you know, uh, since we have rotated the fluid container, so it might going to dump you. So be careful with that. If you're going to give it to 1, maybe 0.1 and maybe minus 1, you might could going to like the fluids, but they won't appear in that way. Well, the simple reason is being that because, you know, the fluids are, you know, they are maybe looking in that way, but when you're going to render them up, they're not going to look in that way because we have already rotated the container. So I'll give you the exact setting in the next lesson that how are we going to uh, tackle this problem. But till now, I hope so that you must have uh, got the solutions of the shading of the fluids with respect to the color as well. We'd like to uh, show you the play blast of this uh, fluids and then I'm going to fix up some more issues. Uh, I'm sure that we haven't tweaked the value of the buoyancy which is still one. Uh, I think so that it will still going to show me some fast moving fluids. So I will going to end up finally with the values of 0.5. Okay. So what are we going to do that? We'll take that thing forward to the next lesson and then we're going to show you the play blast. All right. So see you guys in the next lesson.